TM. TM stands for transaction monitoring. So this is introduction to transaction monitoring. A number of times I have identified that uh, some people working in transaction monitoring never even had a solid KYC, excuse me, a solid KYC um, um, foundation. And it's always affected them. I've worked with a couple of people that keep coming back to me to ask me questions about what do I do, how do I go about it? And I keep wondering, what, how did you even start transaction monitoring without having a basic understanding of KYC? So now that you guys actually have a basic understanding of KYC, at least to a certain level, let's talk about transaction monitoring. So what exactly is transaction monitoring? Transaction monitoring, um, I could say, is a core segment of any bank AML program. Why? Transaction monitoring system, um, they, they are set up to monitor customer transactions, trade transactions, wire payments, and other activities as well, yeah? They're usually a system that, that are being tuned um, to capture a lot of suspicious activity based on different and various regulatory acts, yeah? And I'll explain what I mean by that. And so for some of you guys that, you know, that already registered for a transaction monitoring um, um, uh, session coming up, uh, we will be talking much more deeper in terms of system tuning, alert piercing, and payment screening as well. But I'm just going to give you an highlight here. So this is, let's take for example, this is the system that they use in the bank. It, it doesn't look like this, this is a just representation from um, a, a presentation um, perspective. It's just to give you a flow of it. So we have a system that actually monitors our customer. There are a set of rules that are incorporated into the system. The system is like a system, a machine, a proper system, a software system that is smart enough only based on the rules that it's been included. The primary method of these rules is to detect suspicious activity through different rules and scenarios. The scenarios can reach from scenario one, two, three, four. So for the guys that are actually coming for the next session for transaction monitoring, we'll talk about the different types of scenarios we have how the rules actually applies and how we can actually tune a transaction monitoring system and how that actually works. Rules are one of the most important portion of transaction monitoring software because these rules detect the majority of suspicious activity. Some, some rules are cash structuring, uh, some rules will capture high risk country, some rules will capture wire rules and velocity. Rules are generally queries that, that reviews data that reside in, the, in this transaction monitoring system. And these queries have parameters. Now, I'm not trying to sound too technical, but there are some people on this call that, you know, might are getting into that space of transaction monitoring. They've been working in KYC for a very long time. So I'm just trying to just highlight that as well. So this query would have parameters or filters that are hard coded. Now, what I mean by that is these rules and scenarios are embedded into the transaction monitoring system. So they're actually embedded inside of it. And the scenarios too are also embedded into it to create a logic. Now the logic would be something like if rule one, if a customer meets rule one criteria and rule three criteria, it should create this particular alert. If rule one, because diff, um, um, customer behavior is very erratic and the transaction is a lot. So this actually captures different type of scenarios. And for you to capture scenarios, they have to be a rule and a scenario and a logic that actually calculate this in a very smart way. Sometimes they even use artificial learning, yeah? So what this means for you is that it, it creates a versions of rules to accomplish what one complex rule can do, yeah? And sometimes some very sophisticated system that I've worked with have, have more complex rule that will often give you more parameters and filtering capability. Okay, back to layman terminology, yeah? Now, we have a set of rules that has been included in this. We have scenarios that has been included in this. What this means is these rules then walk and begin to search and scan the entire, entire bank. If a customer actually hits this, now, for example, if you look at that screen, the alert is actually blinking to tell you we something has happened for this particular customer. Now, if you pull up the file, it gives you something like this to tell you um, the alert type is on Russia beneficiary. It means that the, the alert has identified Russia beneficiary. Now, the, our customer is XYZ Bank. 
and the beneficiary is the Libya beneficiary. That is why he has triggered this information for the transaction monitoring team to pick up this particular alert and review it extensively. So because this is said blocked or not, it said blocked, yes, which means this transaction, there's a wire transaction that is pending and needs to be released. And it's called an MT202. MT202 is a type of transaction that is, is rooted through suite. So it, basically, this transaction monitoring is actually giving you the information on why it has been allotted. Now, if you look at the reason, it's saying the customer country is in Turkey, the beneficiary in Libya. That's the reason why, because the lighted in red. Is the KYC updated? It said yes, last updated in 2019, and it's valid. Brilliant. Now, amount is 22 million US dollars and it's blocked it. So now this is a live payment. It's called a real life payment, which means that it has been blocked and you need someone to look at it now, 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 review it and release the transaction or block the transaction and report it to NCA for some reason, maybe through suspicious activity. So if you're a TM analyst, what's the first thing you do when you get an alert like this? You pull up the KYC profile of the individual because, because without the KYC, you can't understand what we are even doing with the customer in the first place. So the KYC profile, like all the things that you KYC guys have been doing to verify, to make sure that the information is accurate as possible, if the information in the KYC is not accurate, then it impacts the transaction monitoring. Does that see, do you see how that actually connects now? The KYC profile, all the work that you guys have been doing, the KYC, the AML, someone is relying totally on it to monitor the customer. Because without a valid and quality data from the KYC, the transaction monitoring rules and scenarios all the work that has been done and all those logic might not be that effective, yeah? And also, we're going to be talking about, for the other guys uh, that are attending the other session, we have a sanction section. We'll talk about how that actually impacts the sanction controls as well. So some of you want to get into the sanction areas. So if I pull up the XYZ KYC profile, it will give me information like, you know, normally you pull up the KYC profile, like the one we pulled, we will see the source of fraud, we see the nature of the business, we see UBI identification is there, customer base, expected an actual transaction, what we we're expecting the customer to do, what the customer is doing, sanction history, adverse media news history, pep connection, litigation, source of wealth, addresses, operation, and dealings. Now, this information is what you would then use, oh, hold on one minute, the beneficiary is what? Um, Patent Industrial Limited, okay, then what's the issue? The issue here is um, our customer is transferring money to Patent Industrial Limited in Libya. Then one of the one I would want to go is I want to see the purpose of the relationship with this customer and the nature of the business of this customer. If the nature of the business of this customer actually involve what this is in line with this, so Pattern Limited might be into plastic, and our customer might be financing maybe an LC, um, um, wherever, wherever, letter of credit or wherever. And if it makes sense, yes. But then I look at the amount, 22 million. Why is the 22 million? I look at the expected and actual. I also look at the um, um, historical sanction. There's no sanction on them previously, no adverse video on them. But why are they dealing with this? Do we know that they'll be dealing with Libya? Yes, it could be. It could be under the scale of address, operation, and dealing. So if you see Libya under the dealing, that yes, the KYC have signed it up to say, yes, we know they'll be dealing with Libya. Yes, we know they'll be dealing with Turkey. Yes, we know all this. Then you said, yes, then you put your rationale and you investigate. You do all your investigation. You make sure that. It is not raising any red flag. And the AML or the alert investigator outcome would either be a true alert, which means if you're saying it's a true alert, it means that yes, it is very risky and we should stop the control, or it's a false alert, which means it's false. And if you're saying it's true or you're saying it's false, you need to provide your rationale on why you think it's true and false. So this is just a basic explanation of what transaction monitoring does. But transaction monitoring is not just limited to payments. They're limited to customer behavior patterns, a lot of areas in transaction monitoring. But having a very good understanding of KYC then moves you into different areas of the AML control, financial account control, bribery and corruption, sanction. Like currently, I work as a sanction expert um, advising and also I work as an AML and also do training. So the different areas in financial crime that you can actually get into, you can get yourself into, which is really good. and but end of day five or five. Any questions?